We are today with X, X, Y, Z. We're going for the last three. Exercise for excellence. Everybody say. Now there's two I want to say. There's ex exercise for excellence, but also exercise with excellence. Because my brother, my sister, the excellence in your life is called Jesus Christ. You know, we can find something like, we call it quality. From rubbish to quality. That is when I get out of the rubbish, when I deal with the sin and I get into the place of victory. When I'm out of the rubbish and I do the right thing. When I not walking in disobedience and rebellion, but I submit and I walk in obedience. That's great. That's quality. But there's a level beyond quality, a level beyond just obedience, where I come into this place of excellence, where His majesty is seen through me. When you understand the place of royalty, how you are an ambassador of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, His majesty. That's where I not just respect God. There's a respect for God from every demon in hell. But then there's a respect for God coming from a place of humility. Not being humiliated in shame like demons and my flesh. But come in a place of humility because I worship him. I love. And from that place of humility I submit and I have respect and I will do obedience. Are you with me? But then there's a place beyond that where I'm so captivated by his beauty, so captivated by his splendor, so captivated by his majesty that excellence can come through my life. But for that, that will not just happen. This, I need to put something in, some discipline, some effort. I need to get rid of flesh. Get rid of the rubbish me. To go into the excellent me. Let's say the rubbish me. Go. In Jesus name. Excellent me. I receive you. Remember what we said. I'm crucified with Christ. I died with Christ. I was buried with Christ. I was raised with Christ. And then I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. And then there's an excellent life. Hidden in Christ. And through the Holy Spirit. I must find that place of excellence in him in him in him god has what is his will for you an excellent life excellent life we're talking about good works and dead works good works that you must walk in because god has prepared it for you because you are his masterpiece god has done an excellent job when he created you you are his masterpiece Created to do, created to sit around. No, created to do, created to work, to do the good works that He has prepared for you in advance before you were born. He, had, he prepared for you, for you to walk in it. So why will you hear from Him? Not just ask Him to come and bless you, not just ask Him to, to okay what you want to do. But why will you go to head office and sit at the table and say, God, what is your agenda? Before you put your agenda the table and your requests if your head is full of that yeah yeah put your request there just to get out of get the things out get the things out so that you can wait on him not wait for the answer not wait for the breakthrough but wait for him because he is the essence of your breakthrough amen and when he is the essence of your breakthrough there's excellence in your breakthrough there's not just a breakthrough there's excellence in your breakthrough when his excellency is in the breakthrough i don't know what's happening with the sound but it's very <laughs> is that to drive out the demons <laughs> okay lord help us okay let's go first one in the amplified Please write it down. For his divine power was bestowed upon, upon us all. Upon us all things. Oh, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. Through the full personal knowledge of him who called us, called us by and to his own glory and excellence. He called us by his excellence and unto his excellence. 
Because you saw the wow of his love, you gave your life to Christ. And then when you gave your life to Christ, then from there, he wants you to get into the excellence of who he is. He accepted you the way you are. When you received Christ, you became his child. But then, he wants to change you into more of him, less of you. Because when it's more of him, there's more excellence from heaven. According to heaven's definition of excellence. Because excellence is not bad, but that you can do something better than that person. Oh, excellent, you won the race. Excellence has to do with so much more than that. Are you with me? Called us by and to his own glory, excellence, virtue. For this very reason, adding your diligence, diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort. Everybody say, employ effort. In exercising your faith to develop virtue, to develop excellence, resolution, Christian energy. Exercise your faith to develop excellence. Let's say, I will exercise my faith to develop excellence. So that is not, I'm exercising my faith for the breakthrough, exercising my faith for provision, exercising my faith to get over the rubbish, exercising my faith to restore the relationship. There's something more. Exercise, exercising my faith to come into the place of excellence where royalty is seen in me and through me. Where there's excellence in your voice, in your, in your counsel, in your song, in your dance, in, in what you do, in what you study, in where you work, in how you do your work, in how you start your business. There's excellence because you do it for the king of glory. And you're captivated by him. You're not captivated by your challenges. You're not captivated by the Goliaths that you need to deal with. You're captivated by the one that is so trillions of times bigger than your Goliaths. Oh, you're still here. Exercise your faith to develop excellence. And in exercising this, this virtue, in exercising, virtue must bring you to knowledge, intelligence, that you're not stupid. And in exercising, develop Christian love. Well, okay, what, what's that now? I'm going to exercise my faith, not just for breakthrough, not just for my needs, not just for the promises of what I can have, what I mustn't have, how to deal with things. Faith, but to come into a place of royal walk, an excellent spirit of quality, more than quality, of this place of coming from the palace, living from the palace. But all of that is so that what? So that then with that, I exercise to develop a knowledge. And this is not information there's many people hell knows the information of the word much more better than you and me but this knowledge is the intimate knowing it's a relational knowing develop this intelligence of i know how to walk with god that is intelligent man who knows how to walk with god and he's walking with god that is true intelligence hello because the devil is a thousand times smarter than you in me <laughs> but but he does not have the knowledge of how to walk and experience the walk with God I know my God he knows me heart to heart deep calling unto deep the, a beautiful intimate relationship that there can be in spite of whatever you're going through we are here amen we are still here hello but from that place Exercise the faith for excellence and excellence for intelligence, like the knowledge of how to walk with God. And from that place, I'm exercising love. Hmm. It sounds like, because love, it can be a very cheap word. Love, when it's like even more than excellence, more than intelligence, more than relating. Love equals God. God is love. So at the end of the day, God is the center of everything. But 
Love is the center. That will bring us to the next one. And that is, you have everything, you have everything. Now let me show you a more excellent way. And it's called, next one. But earnestly desire the greater gifts and I show you still a more excellent way. Let's say a more excellent way. Now all the gifts in that 1 Corinthians 12, he's talking about the gifts of the Spirit, the power of God. Hey, Amen. The gifts of the Spirit when you walk in it and you can walk prophetically and tell whoever what God is going to do. You are sharp. You can pray for people. They get out of the wheelchair. You pray for people. They rise from the dead. And all the things, and you go and you walk on water. You know, all of that stuff could be, wow, wow, wow. And after all of that is explained, then Paul comes and he says, now let me show you something that is more excellent than all of that. And that is called love. That must be some other love that we need a lot of faith for. That is something, a quality that is that when you think of love in your life, you see God in it. I must lo love the Lord with, with everything. But that what is godly in me, I give unto him as an expression of love. I must love myself the way that God loves me. And I must love others the way that God loves them. Then it is this love that is called God. God is love. Amen. You are still with me? So you can have everything, guys. After he spoke about all the gifts, that is one spirit, then he talked about the body of Christ, but he's one head of the body, Jesus Christ. That's in 1 Corinthians 12. So then he says, oh, you, there's guys with this inferiority, superiority. Inferiority, because I'm not the leg, I'm not part of the body. Superiority, I don't need the eye. I'm the ear and I don't need the eye. You call that stupidity. Let's say, God's children is not stupid. They are not stupid. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, what are we talking about? You can be excellent in your job. You can pay yourself with others. But in the body of Christ, you must understand it's all about the head. The excellence of the headship. That's from Christ. So walk with him in such a way that people look at you and they see excellence and they realize that's because of the God that you serve. That guy, he walks in a, a, a royal way. He's walking in a kingly way. He's walking in a way that is different than the rest. He's not just doing his job. There's some, something more excellent in what he does. Are you with me? And that's where people cannot explain certain things in you. And that's when they look at what you do, what you say, they, they say, um, it must be God. It must be God. It's when they don't find any more something to describe you in a very positive way. And they have to say, that must be God. Then you start to understand excellence. Practice exercise to come into that place. But if I say not exercise for excellence, but exercise with excellence, what am I talking? In your spirit, if you are reborn, you gave your life to Christ, excellence is in your spirit. So when my soul must come in line, when my personality, my situation, my relationships, everything that I go through must come in, come in line. If my success is not in line with his excellence, that can happen many times. You need to change that success. You need to be careful of that success. Are you with me? But the excellence that is in your spirit, that royal quality that is in your spirit, walk with that. Work with that. Work with the Holy Spirit testifying in your spirit where excellence dwells. And from that place, get your soul in line. Renew your mind through the word. To submit to his excellency, the living word. And do it. Do it what God has for you. So it's not just as we walked through all these weeks and weeks and months. How to get into doing the good works that God has prepared for you. 
But if we're looking at the last few things that I believe God gave me about this, it's going into the place of excellence. We at the end when we go to Z, it's all about Zion. It's all about the New Jerusalem. It's all about the, the the mountain of the Lord, Mount Zion. It's all about the new heaven, new earth. And it's not spooky spiritual things. It's not just some prophetic things. It's it's a reality, guys. And may we understand how to get into that place. May we understand. Ish. A more excellent way is the way of love. Love is the driving force. 2 Corinthians 5. Love compels you. Love is the one that forces you. The love is the one that drives you. So this driving force, like we said in the beginning, that Christian love with her with Christian energy. The energy in you is supposed to be excellent because it's called love. Driven by love in what you do. Opposite, driven by fear. Fear that there will be a lack. And that fear is not, <gasps> it's just, I feel uns unsure. I feel uncertain. I've, but from a place of peace and love, build your future, build, build your life, build the family, build what you have, and it will have eternal value. Amen. Next one. Daniel, in as much as an excellent spirit, everybody say excellent spirit. Knowledge, understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining. Enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Just leave it there. Who is calling him? The palace. The leadership, the political guys that are in charge of the nation, the guys that are in charge of the nation, they are voted in by the nation. Say, I can trust those guys. They will have the wisdom. They will have the answers. They will lead us into what must happen. Those guys, they are the guys. Now, you know, when you live according to the excellence of God, those guys that are voted in to lead the nation, they will, what's a nice word for shut up? They will. They will be still. <laughs> and they will say, we don't have the wisdom. We need the church of God because we see they have an excellent spirit. That is, if we develop our lives in such a way that excellence is seen through us. Then even governments, then even kings, like it says in Isaiah and many other places, Kings will rise to your shining brightness. Kings will rise. Kings will come to you. When you know what? You know that you don't have the wisdom, but the wisdom is found in him. Then you will have an excellent spirit. Every child of God has an excellent spirit, but it's not seen. If they don't develop their spirit to grow up, to become mature. And to overrule their personality, overrule their emotions, overrule their opinions, overrule their hurts, their disappointments, overrule their own personal successes. And when that is overruled, then your spirit becomes strong because you feed your spirit with the word. Not just your memory with the word. Excellence will come forth and the world will recognize your excellent spirit. That you have the knowledge, you have the understanding. What does it mean? The world says, you have knowledge that we don't have. You have understanding that we don't have. You have an interpretation of life and for the nation that we don't have. You can understand dreams. Uh oh, you will be called upon by the Council of Bluefontein. You will be called upon by the education system. You will be called upon... Why is the rubbish going on out there? Because the church didn't rise in excellence. Because the Khamors, the rubbish, is ruling until, until the manifestation of the sons of God, the mature Christians, where maturity has to do, is guys that is not about them, is all about him. The mature, the mature, 
is, God, how can we serve your needs in Bloemfontein? What do you want to do in Bloemfontein? Not just come and serve my need and what I need for my life and this. Ask him, yes, because God says you need to be dependent on him. So declare your dependency through humility. Dependency, humility. That is why you ask God, God, give us today our daily bread. Because you declare dependency, you declare humility. Not because of he must do all the goodies for you. He must turn the stones into bread. Uh -uh. That's not the heart of your request. God will help you. God will help me. Yes, next one. I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Come on, man. This is not encouragement from a brother to a brother to encourage him to go full out with the Lord. This is a Hamor's king out there that does not serve Christ. That is arrogant and do his own chamors and rabbis and whatever he wants to do. Think he is the God of the world. But those guys, I've heard about the guys in the church. Those guys, they call themselves Christians. They say they are Christians. They're following this King Jesus Christ. I've heard about them. I've heard that the Spirit of God is in them. People must say, I know the Spirit of God is in you. I know a lot of chamors, demon of religion is in those guys, those Christians. They just tell you, stop this, do this, they, 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 but look at them, they look miserable, man. God forgive us. <laughs> Amen. But we're going to get into that place. You're going to hear from God the good works that he has prepared for you. You're going to repent from the dead works that was good ideas, but it wasn't from God. And get into the dream Father has for you and do the good works so that your light so shine before men through your works so that they will glorify before men, through your, uh, before your brothers. No, this is Matthew 5, 16. Hey? Let your light so shine, not just shine. Let it shine in such a way that the world will glorify your God. This is what happened here with this Hamor's king. He said, no, no, I heard that the Spirit of God. Oh, but you believe in a lot of gods, king. Oh, how can you say that the Spirit of God? There's a certain God, and that God's Spirit is living in you, and I realize that. And I need to hear what he is saying. And that light and understanding and excellent wisdom. This is not just you have an excellent spirit. The essence of who you are is excellence excellent the essence of who you are that because you're not a baboon why because you have a spirit baboon have no spirit we said it three million times eh? that's why that chamorse what they push in education system that we come from the baboon you go and tell them you tell your kids to tell the educators you ask the, the educator you ask the professor professor was your grandmother's grandmother a baboon or just uh, did she look half baboon and half human? Because if you are right and we come all from the baboon, they must still be half baboons, half human. A quarter baboon, a three-quarter human, a three-quarter baboon, a quarter human. Uh, not so. Okay. Your wisdom is excellent. Why? Why? You don't have answers you don't just have an answer you speak like a king when you speak there's authority there's royalty there's this excellence in your wisdom oh god help me god help you may the church grow up may god help us amen that it will happen great next one therefore i always exercise they say always exercise and discipline myself to have a clear, unshaken, blameless conscience. Avoid of offense towards God and towards men. Offense is I, I have issues. It's, you know, I just have this krapperigheid. I just have this um, thing in here about somebody. 
and about myself. I'm irritated with somebody. That's that type of thing. I'm irritated with myself. I'm irritated with people around me, especially when you're tired. Hey, man. When guys go on tour in their team, the Creare teams, I tell them, speak to one another. Who are you? How's your personality? And I will tell them sometimes, you are like this more, and you are like that, and you're going to irritate that one, and you, uh, because of who you are. But then tell one another, who are you when you are stressed and when you are tired? Because that's sometimes a total different you. <sighs> May God help us. That's a powerful, powerful prophet, Elijah. Fire from heaven. Boom. All the bar prophets gone. And then one lady is coming after me and bah, he's laying underneath the tree and he says, God, take me. I'm the only one left. And God is saying, What are you doing here? As if God doesn't know what Elijah is doing there. He knows exactly what he's doing there. Hello? But <laughs> who are you when you are tired? May God help you. May God help me that I will exercise. So my, my brother, my sister, excellence is not just going to come. I need to exercise my faith so that it from rubbish to breakthrough, from slavery to breakthrough, from being a, a product of my circumstance to a product of his heart, I need to exercise my faith to get into excellence. And then I need to, ex to exercise what to do with the excellence that is in me. Are you with me? Not just going to happen. Exercise discipline to do what? To have a clear conscience. Clear conscience. Clear conscience. Conscience is the one that sometimes you fight and you think is the devil condemning you. Then it's not the devil condemning you. Uh, uh, those who are in Christ, there's no condemnation. Those who are in Christ, not for the guys that are in the flesh and in trouble. But when you will not hear what Holy Spirit is saying to you, where Holy Spirit in you many times speak as your conscience, then God's going to use people, and then you will be irritated with him. Don't, don't, don't point the finger at me, you know? You don't, don't like that, guys. You don't like that uh, pastor because he's just putting his nose into my life, you know, or that cell leader or that guy, you know, and, but you need that, you need that, I need that, you need that, are you with me? So let's get involved in one another's lives and let's not take offense towards God, offense towards men, but when my conscience, I can see that's my companion, my conscience is the one that's helping me. Because through the Holy Spirit, it will show me, it will show me, it will nail me on all my mistakes. No, he will help you to get out of it. Because when you fall in it more and more, you're going to get hurt, you're going to get hurt. But when conscience and obedience meets one another, we find a pure heart. We find a pure heart. We find a heart where excellence is part of it. You have victory, you have quality in your obedience, quality in victory, but when that quality and victory with a clear conscience come together, you go for excellence. Then you walk like royalty. Then you live like royalty. Then you know the palace as your home. The palace is your home. And like we said a few times, maybe just so by the way, Remember, you're not a child of the king. You're not a child of the king, my brother, my sister. And I don't condemn people that say that. But you are not, God the Father is not your grandfather. God is your grandpa if you are the king, if you are a child of the king. Because the king is Jesus Christ and he's a son of God. If you're a child of the son, one plus one is two. And the son is the son of the father, and you, then father is your grandfather. But you serve the king, and the king is in you, and you are in the king. Christ is in you, you are in Christ. 
And so you walk as royalty, as ambassadors of Christ, because the, His majesty of heaven and earth is living in you. And you are living in His majesty, and you are seated with His majesty in heavenly places. Amen. Great. Next one. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens? You who have set. He's talking about God. How excellent is your name. You know, when we can understand how to use the name of Christ in an excellent way, as long as what hell must do, what the devils assigned to your life must do, they must make sure that you hear the name of Jesus so much that it means nothing. You've heard the name of Jesus so many times. You sing Jesus, name of Bible names. In the name of Jesus, you pray. As long as you don't, if you're not captivated by his name. But if you come to know how excellent is his name, with excellence combined equals Jesus Christ. If you understand that, then it will not be that hell needs to, and is trying to, Put that name as general name. That's why the devil exposed himself, what I told atheists in the past. You know, if there's no God, or if God, Jesus Christ, is not the only God, why is the whole earth, with every religion, with every hamors, rubbish, what you can find out there that people do, why is there not a swear with Buddha? Why is there not a swear with Muhammad? <laughs> Hello? But there's one swear word because there's one name above all names that all of hell and all that demons must make sure that people don't use it with respect. They must not see the excellence in the name of Christ. And that is Jesus. That's why the devil exposed himself. There's only one name above all names. It's Jesus. May God help you. May God help me. Amen. Excellent your name. Go on. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers. Let's do this. The work of God's fingers. Now you must move the fingers. You must just know. Let it be. You must be able to see God's hand on what he made. On what he made. If he's your role model in the good works that you're going to do, you must see what he did and what he is doing. Amen. When I consider, when I just think about it, your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, what you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? How is it possible? How can we look at creation and we see the excellence, we see the beauty, and you come, Lord, and you are mindful of me. You take time to stand with me. You take time to hear me. You take time to restore me. You take time to heal me. You take time to be so in a trillionth of a second to hear my heart, to hear my prayer, to be there for me. How, who am I? Come on, man. So when you see the excellence of God there, you know what will happen to you? You will become so humble. Not condemned. Not shamed. But there will be such humility coming in. In realizing what a privilege that I can use the name of Jesus. Where so many others must go and burn in hell. Because they don't know him. That's unfair. But the unfairness is for the church not to talk about Christ. That's in that song even what we wrote. God forgive your church for not bringing the nations to your throne. For not bringing the nations to your feet. For not bringing the Palestinians, the Jews, the so many of, of Ukrainians and Russians. Yes, there's excellent churches in some of those nations. But still, the church had to bring the the excellence of God. The church had to bring the solutions, the light. Hello. Are you with me? But today you will be there. 
because your prayer is going to be there because you are going to be open to the Holy Spirit and say Holy Spirit guide me what must I pray for who must I pray for in the world for what country or for what youth or for what person wherever you want to take my prayer and you with your prayer is with those four guys under the rubble kids and grandma that is dying a small death for the next six days horrific death and suddenly things happen like we said a few times and suddenly it's like it happened in Egypt in some places suddenly the boy came out there and said there was this man in white clothes that gave me water and food every day whoa it's, it's good but are you with me and over that child there's a hand of God because there was a prayer from some people that didn't live for themselves they have a, had an excellent spirit and in excellence they heard God and they just knew how to pray in tongues and the prayer became intercession for a place that you don't even know where it is make the difference yes for you have made him a little lower than the angels but actually in the original it's talking about little lower than God himself because we may, were not made lower than angels Look at the different translations, okay, please? Because we have this place that angels don't have. Because we were made in His image. We, be, were, we became the crown of creation. We have this relationship with God that angels will not be. We will be the home of God and not the angels. Angels will be part of heaven, but we will be the home. Awesome privilege for humility. Angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. That glory has to do with excellence. You have made him to have dominion, authority, over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Over all the works of your hands. Go out tonight. Go out tomorrow. Go and look into nature and say, God gave me authority over all this beauty. Because what God has done, His work, what He has done, is beautiful, He's excellent. How can God give me authority over His excellence? It's impossible. It's impossible. Who is man? Who are you? Who am I? That that could be even possible. That out of when I see, when God opened my eyes and I can see His beauty, I can see His excellence out there in creation, that God says, I'm giving you authority over all of that. See the excellence of God in the creation and you will, your eyes can be opened about the excellence in you. Are you here? May God help you. May God help me to understand that. Because there's a companionship that God wants with you. There's a companionship that God wants with you. Want with you. That's why the king with his child now the child is going to start to rule with the king but he's, he's he's immature he doesn't know he does not have the wisdom he doesn't know how to do it but as long as he focus on his father his father and he can hear his father and he will be obedient to his father and he will respect his father and he will love his father and he will get his father's heart then father's heart to children's heart when it's connected the blessing from heaven will be there on earth as it is in heaven. The excellence of the world that God dreamt of. For God so loved his excellent world. That he always dreamt of. That he gave his son to die for the Hamors rubbish world that we created. So that that rubbish world in me and through me can be turned into the excellent world that he dreamt of. Because he loved us so much. Are you with me? Are you, um, you are still here. So where you go, royalty, where you go, with excellent wisdom, where you go, let his beauty be seen. Let him see. Isaiah 61, you're a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Let's say, I'm a planting of the Lord. For the display of his splendor. He wants to display his own beauty. That's why he has called you into that place. So understand why are you called into that rubbish. Is that it? 
Isaiah 12. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done excellent things. This, let this be known throughout the earth. God has done excellent things. You will only know it when you allow God to open your eyes. Otherwise, we can murmur, we can be muff, we can be this, we can be negative, we can be whatever. But even when you're tired, you worked. But you worked with God. At the end of what you've done, your satisfaction is that you could praise God because He has done excellent things in you, through you, with you. That is when you work with God. Otherwise, I'm just tired. And then it's the tired when I'm irritated and frustrated and I'm this and I'm that and when I'm tired. Everybody must just give me space. No, we must have our alone time. Yes, definitely. It's, it's right. <laughs> but my fulfillment after I've done what God has called me to do is that I can see, I can honor him and say, wow, praise the Lord. Even in a song, because he has done excellent things, excellent things. It must be known, it must be known. Who's going to make it known? You. With the song that you sing, with the praise that you're going to, going to give God. My wife always talks about my daughter that had some uh, bad dreams for a, in a season for like a few weeks. And we prayed for her, and in the night even sat with her and praying uh, when she was sleeping. And then one day, they were going to Jaden's school, ne? To Jaden's school, and she was singing, and she was saying, singing. Um, Jesus von Heiningen is li loves me as lief für mich. And Angeline thought, how long am I... I give her now perspective about, it's not Van Heiningen. That's my surname, so by the way, Van Heiningen. Okay. So it's not Jesus Van Heiningen, it's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And, uh, and later when she asked now, what, what, what? Because that was in the time all the dreams went and she was sleeping. And she said, no, everybody that lives in our house is Van Heiningen. And in the night, when I go to sleep, I saw him sitting at my feet. He's living in our house. But she was like, Mom, what's your problem? You know? <laughs> he's in our house, so he's finding it. Oh, man, we cried. <laughs> oh, what am I saying, man? Come on, man. It must be known through all the earth, known through all the earth, that God has done excellent things. Allow God to come and do that in your life. To do that in your life. When you do that dance, there must be excellent because of His presence. Do your strategy in your business, your strategy in your, in your finance, your, you, what you do with your music, there must be excellence because of this walk, because you practice, you exercise. That means you push with commitment. Is that the end? Oh, another one. Ooh. Oh, I already finished with that. That's the last one. Mm. It will be oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. That will be where God plants you. It's not the tree cannot uproot itself. You're going to die. Don't just desire a different work. If God says He's giving you a different work, He will take the plant out and plant it in the right way. That tree that is grown like this, you must be careful. If the tree is like this, yes, it's easier. But if the tree has grown, eh, yeah, yeah. Let the master do a replanting. If he's planting you into a new job, into a different place. But otherwise, you better bear fruit where God has placed you. You just do that and God will honor. God will honor and he will take you out if you must... Not take you out. No, he will take you out and plant you in the right. But the deeper the root, the the more the fruit. Oh, let's say that. The deeper the root. Well, let's try that, everybody. The deeper the root, the more excellent the fruit. That was the correction with that one. Ah, okay. So, so what I want to say at the end of the day. Hmm. Okay. 
you will find a lot of scriptures, a lot of scriptures in uh, the Psalms, 150 Psalms, Psalms, 150 Psalms about how excellent is your name, how excellent your work, how excellent you are. Through different translations, talking about the glory, talking about the splendor, talking about his majestic display, through what he has, how he has placed his majesty, majestic excellence on the heavens, on top of everything. He has placed it. Oh Lord my God, I think that's why that song, that guy had a revelation when he wrote that song. Oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder. I think you all know that song. And there's something sometimes in that song that is just, if you allow Holy Spirit, next time so sing that song and allow the Spirit to draw you in. Draw you in. If that worship song was written by somebody led by the Spirit, there's some place that you need to be drawn in. You need to be drawn into that place. Amen? Thank you, Father, for who you are. Oh, God. When you work, it's always excellent. And I pray even through the word that you will do an excellent, excellent work in each one of us. Who are we, Lord? That you are mindful of us. Who are we that you will stand with us? That you will even focus on each one of us, Lord. What an awesome grace. What an awesome privilege. That we can come from your heart and be the dream born from your heart. God, I pray that you will touch every man and woman in this place. To have a fresh, fresh revelation of the privilege, the awesome privilege that we have of knowing you. I pray for a new level of respect for your name, new level of respect for your name, and to be attracted to your word, to be drawn into who you are, drawn into the place of where we see your beauty. Help us to look beyond the facts into the truth that will set us free, the truth about who you are, and to be captured by your splendor. That's our decision today. As I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will do that work for each one of us here. In Jesus' name and that name alone, we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.